Hello, Laverne here, and thank you for joining me. May this video be a blessing to you, and may it honor and glorify God in His kingdom. I'm responding to a video made by Rational Round Table. Now, he professes to be a moderate Christian. Now, I'm not sure what that exactly means. So, one of the first things I would like to get out in the open here is, what exactly does that mean? So, I'm asking you, Round Table, what does it mean when you say you're a moderate Christian? Does this mean that you are a universalist? I ask this because you made some statements that tends to make me believe that you are a universalist. You say that in your video that you had just finished a conversation with Bossman. Well, I know Bossman is a universalist. And you make a comment in your video that is almost word for word what Bossman has said in his videos. So. I, as a subscriber and as a viewer, and for those other subscribers and viewers, I believe we have a right to know what kind of Christian you are. What are your beliefs? Because your statements, I believe, well, they should make other Christians a little, a little leery. You say things like this. Jesus Freak believes a misguided, warped version of Christianity. Christianity is not about rules and regulations of Old Testament. Christianity is not about a set of laws and precepts. Rather, Christianity, according to you, is about a philosophy of love. Just love, love, love. That's what Christianity is about. Love your neighbor, love your enemy, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now, as much as this may sound like I'm belittling the message of love, I'm not. I am belittling your teaching that the entire idea of Christianity, that Christianity is all about and only about love. That's an absolute lie. Love is a big part of uh, Christianity. We are commanded to love. It is demanded of us. And if we love God, we are going to love like God. If Christ is in us, we are going to love like Christ. So yes, love is a part of the teachings of Christianity. But it is not everything. We cannot make a doctrine around a few passages and a few teachings of Christ. The gospel, according to Christ... The Good News Gospel includes a lot of things, and we must have all of it. We must look at all of the pieces in order to have the full puzzle of the Gospel according to Christ. The Good News Gospel and the ministry of Christ has to do with the Kingdom of God, the Kingdom of God that is in us and the outward Kingdom of God. His entire ministry was about teaching us the narrow path. How to get to the kingdom of God. What we must do. Our part. His entire ministry. Everything he taught up to the last supper. Was teaching us our part in the new covenant. And then he talks about the new covenant. Going through the last supper rites. And then he seals that new covenant with his blood. And I assure you. Just believing that all you're supposed to do is love and you're supposed to turn a blind eye to sin like you do, this is not showing love. Love does not mean that you rationalize, justify, and enable sin, or that you are rebellious against God or disobedient against God, that you continue to live in sin. These things are not about love, have nothing to do with love whatsoever. In fact, it is the opposite. But the things that you preach and teach do just this. You preach this warped, perverted idea of love. Just as Bossman does. And so this is why I'm making this video. is to refute, rebuke, and reprove you and your false teachings. Now, I'm going to get to the point of the video. Now, you address two things about Jesus Freak. According to you, there are two uh, 
uh, basic teachings of Jesus Freak that you disagree with. One is this idea of gay marriage. According to you, it's acceptable and we shouldn't be fighting it. According to Jesus Freak, it's wrong. Now, Jesus Freak was asked a question. The question was, if God asked you, or if God commanded you to take the life, to sacrifice the life of one of your children, would you do it? This was a question put to Jesus Freak. He responded that he hoped he would have the strength to do it. Well, there's been a lot of YouTube drama over this. People have even gone so far as to say that social services should be called. That this shows that as this fundy, this fundamentalist, Jesus Freak cannot be entrusted with bringing up his children. That we never know when he might think he hears the voice of God and might kill one of his children. Well, this is absolutely ridiculous. We have to look at the question that was asked and whether or not he was actually answering the question and how people are distorting now that question and coming at the question from an entirely different point of view. And that's exactly what we see happening. See, the question wasn't if you thought you heard God telling you, if you thought you heard a voice telling you to sacrifice one of your children, would you do it? That's not the question that was asked. The question was, if God asked you to do this. So the assumption is, we know it's God that's asking the question. There is no denying this, no question about it being God. Therefore, we know that there's been proof and evidence given that this is God asking this of Jesus freak. And his response is that he hoped he would have the strength to do it. Well, people have twisted this and come at it from another angle, saying, well, God would never ask you to do this, or that God does not exist. And so when an atheist comes from the assumption, comes from the, the point of view that God does not exist, therefore you could never hear God ask you to do this, this then shows that you are unbalanced. Well, they're, they're not responding to the question. They're coming at it from an entirely different angle, from a different question. If they had asked, if you thought you heard a voice asking you to do this, would you do it? Jesus Freak would have responded entirely different. And what I find appalling is that there are Christians jumping on him as well and doing the very same thing that the atheists have done, such as Round Table, coming at it from a, an entirely different point of view not coming from the assumption that it was God asking him to do it. You know, coming up with uh, reasoning like, well, I know that God would never ask me to do it, so no, I would not do it. I know that the God of the New Testament is different from the Old Testament and therefore would not ask me to do it. That's a different question entirely. If you were asked, do you think the God of the New Testament would ever ask you to do this? Well, fine, your answer then suits that question. The response from so many Christians when they now want to twist the question and, and add things to it, it shows that they do not have the guts to answer the question as Jesus Freak did. You must ensure you are looking at the question as Jesus Freak was asked and that he is responding to. These atheists who jump on on him, you know, for what he, how he answered, it shows one, they have no understanding of scripture whatsoever, and it shows that they tried to load the question and now are coming at it from an entirely different angle than what the question was asked of. Now, I'm actually going to read from the New Testament scripture. According to Round Table, you know, this idea of looking at the Old Testament and so on, that he, he hates this. But the answer to this question is actually found in the New Testament. And so I'm going to read from the New Living Translation from Hebrews chapter 11, beginning with verse 17. It reads, It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son Isaac. 
uh, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. So this explains why Abraham did what he did. He had faith in God in that he had been given this promise about you know, all his, these children that were going to come from the seed of Isaac. He believed then that if God asked him to sacrifice Isaac, that Isaac would be brought back, would be brought back to life. I also would have the same kind of faith in God. If I knew without question that God asked me to do something like this, I would have the faith that God would either bring my child back to life or he would have an even grander, a greater and more glorious outcome planned for my child and for myself and for his kingdom. In fact, that is the, the greatest importance is that it is his kingdom that is glorified. So if God asked me to do something, I know he would be doing it for his kingdom. And if you wanted to use me and my child in such a way, then I hope that I would have the strength to follow through with it and trust that God, you know, that he has a loving reason for doing it, even though I may not understand it. People were tested in this way all the time, not just in the Old Testament, but in, you know, the early church and continuing to be tested today. There are many countries where Christians are put to the sword. They are killed if they do not denounce Christ. A gun is put to their head and they are told that if they do not denounce Christ, they will be killed. And so they are tested. Do they put the world and their life ahead of God and Christ? That's what was being asked of Abraham. And that is what's being asked in the question of Jesus freak. People have thought up these questions, you know, and it's always being asked of Christians, trying to frame a question that's going to call into question their faith and going to show either that God is evil or that they don't have faith. That's the point to these loaded questions. If someone were to hold a gun to my child's head and tell me I must denounce Christ or my child is going to die, I would hope that I'd have the strength to remain firm in my faith, knowing that there are going to be the rewards in heaven that are spoken about in Scripture. I would hope I'd have the faith, you know, to remain strong in the belief that the rewards in heaven are far more important than, you know, the life here in this world. That's what's at stake in these questions. And that's what was at stake with the early Christians and these Christians who are being persecuted in the world today. What about taking the mark of the beast? Rational round table. If you were told that you must either take the mark of the beast or be killed, would you take the mark of the beast? If someone pointed a gun to your child's head and said that your child would be killed if you did, did not denounce Christ, would you denounce him? These are questions that Christians must face all the time. And this idea that Jesus freak answered incorrectly and that Christians are jumping on him, I find absolutely appalling. Christians need to understand that we are to obey God and that's what Jesus freak was doing when he answered the question. He was stating that he hoped he would have the strength to obey God. God to remain obedient to him even when tested with something as difficult as taking the life of his own child. All right, as always, I look forward to comments and messages. Till next time, peace and blessings.